Okay, that's quite dry now. I've just finished with the hair dryer. Uh, while you're here, uh, I also change my water as well. I like to change my water regularly. It helps um, to keep your paintings clean. Um, and having translucent washes is important in watercolour painting. So try and avoid the muddiness. Um, on these areas here now, I just want to denote these shadows a little bit stronger. The sun's coming from this direction. So with the same blue that I used here, I've just strengthened it just a smidge because we're now in the foreground. And I just want to darken and use a bit of dry brush there just to denote that glistening of the snow. I'm just going to do the same down this side just for balance. And that's quite nice now. It's looking like a, a little ridge there in this area. It looks like it's those in undulations. Um, I don't think we need to let that... I don't think we need the blow dryer on that. Now what I'm going to do now is just take, just take a half inch uh, flat brush um, and using the same mix that I use for the rocks no, I won't actually use that it's burnt umber I want and, so this is burnt umber and yellow ochre and I just want to denote some um, grasses sticking up through the snow now and these two with a little bit of the blue should give me that. I'm just testing this dry brush. I want to denote some grasses, so I'm just taking enough of this paint off the brush. That's about right. And then everywhere that where I want some grasses, I just literally pick up and dab. So it's just a you just flick up and dab. I don't want to overdo with this. It's tempting to. <laughs> Just a little bit more brown. Try and vary your colour mixes wherever you can and then it just adds interest to your painting. And again, I'm just grounding these grasses just by having a little horizontal taps and then it looks like shadow. Remember the sun's coming from this direction so there would be some shadow kind of in behind here. I just want to suggest some rocks and you know, this is a kind of track that works its way up the hillside and that's fine for there. Just wash that brush out. Using a, a one inch flat brush now, 30 mil. Just going to wet that and dry it and dry it off. A brush that's dry uh, won't pick up paint properly, so you've got to wet them first, but they've got to be just slightly damp to be able to pick up the um, the paint. What I'm going to do now, with the same similar mix that I used, I'm just going to add a little bit more light red in that. We now want to do the boughs of these trees here. So with a flat brush, I actually prefer to use a flat brush than a rigger. If we drag it horizontally, you can see that that looks like a, a silver birch. So, got a rocking drawing board here. Just carefully. And trees always grow narrow as they get higher up so you've got to make sure that if you do if you overdo it like I did here you've got to make sure that you do the rest of the tree lower down because <laughs> a tree would never grow or rarely grow um, get thinner as it goes to the top it would always sorry get thicker as it goes to the top it would always get thinner so we're just going to do now a few of those trees and vary vary the thickness of them and the heights and the odd bit of kind of bracken growing around the bottom of them that's okay for that and then using I'll use the edge of uh, this brush which is a, a quarter inch um, is it about a quarter half an inch maybe Maybe the other one wasn't half an inch, maybe it was three quarters. I'm now going to put these um, 
um, the branches on these kind of conifer trees. So I'm going to be quite bold with this. Um, just before we do that, bear in mind that the sun's coming from this direction. I just want to put some dark on these boughs of these trees on that side. And this is where the shadow would be. So, sun's coming from this direction, so shadow would be on the left hand side. That's fine. And then using yellow ochre and burnt umber. Just using the edge of this brush and I just want to sorry, drawing bars rock in there. And keep these random. You want some darker than others because some branches are some branches are further away than others. So do a few and then change your mix. Just do slightly darker. I don't know if you've ever noticed these, they're almost triangular the these little growths that come off. Kind of fir trees I suppose they are. So when you've done some you'll notice that there's a there's a regularity here. So what you do then is change to another brush. For slightly smaller. Again, it's a flat brush, just vary the mix, a bit more burnt umber. Okay, now we're getting where? And you've got some dark and some light. Don't want to come too far down with these. The boughs of a, this type of tree are, are fairly sparse. And again, just try and be fairly random with this. And they grow in a kind of horizontal way, do the fir trees. I'm calling them fir trees, I don't, I'm not an expert. <laughs> and again, on the right hand side of these trees, there would be some of these leaf branchy things in, in shadow. Bearing in mind, sun's coming from that direction. That's looking pretty good. Now, using a rigger brush, which is the finest brush, which I'm not a great lover of, I seem to be able to get more effects with, uh, with the edge of a flat brush than I do with a rigger, but anyway, it's nice for denoting. So we're coming now into the foreground, and we're just adding some fine detail to this. So on these, I just want to add a suggestion of branches and there's some branches without any leaves on sticking out here. Yep, yeah, looking good. Then I'm just going to put the suggestion of some grasses just sticking out of the snow. So it gives a nice contrast against the the white as well. This is what we call counter change where you see dark things in front of light things and that's what makes paintings attractive. Just gonna denote a few kind of rocky things in here just to give us a bit more. more interest here. I want the um, I want the viewer's eye in this painting to actually follow this path and then follow this ridge to the rocks. The trees will stop the eye from wandering off the painting here and then hopefully the eye will then pick up this line and lead you to the distance. That's the plan. Um, with the same mix that we've still got um, of that blue that we use for the distant hills. I'm just going to use a, a fairly dry rigger just to denote these masts. And there is our bet actually. There's about six masts up here and there's little buildings as well. 
Because I'm not suggesting. Okay. I'm happy with that. So we're going to 